private members' business, Affaires et des députés, consideration of Bill C-232 at second reading, Arab Heritage Month Act, standing in the name of Mr. McGinty. Mr. McGinty, seconded by Ms. Kayabanga, Kayabanga, sorry, moves that Bill C-232, an act respecting Arab Heritage Month, be now read a second time and referred to the Standing Committee on Heritage, uh, Canadian Heritage. Debate. <coughs> Excuse me. The Honourable Member for Ottawa South. Well, good evening, Madam Speaker, and uh, it's an honour and a privilege to rise in the House uh, this evening to begin the debate on my private member's bill that would establish the month of April here in Canada as Arab Heritage Month. Les premiers immigrants d'origine arabe sont arrivés au Canada. The first immigrants of Arab origin arrived over a century ago, uh, about 140 years ago. Now there are over a million Canadians of Arab, Arabic origin, and that number keeps rising. That arrived in Canada 140 years ago was Ibrahim Abu Nader, and he settled in Montreal. Since then, we've seen the Arab community grow and prosper in different parts of the country and truly help build the social fabric of Canadian society. The Arab population in Canada has increased by approximately 34 percent since 2011 and by about 75 percent since 2006. Through its youth, our Arab Canadian's future is very bright. About 42 percent of the Arab population in Canada is under the age of 24. By comparison, the total Canadian population that is 24 years old and under was 29 percent. In addition, the Arab population in Canada has a lower proportion of people aged 65 and older, about 5 percent, than in the Canadian population as a whole, which is about 16 percent. Mr. Speaker, in my riding of Ottawa South, I have the second largest Arabic-speaking population of all of the 338 electoral districts in Canada. I have many friends in the national capital regional Arab community and way beyond. I am proud of their outstanding achievements, and it's a privilege to be their representative in this House. Arab Canadians are proud of their racial and cultural roots, and they're proud to be Canadian, which is why Arab Heritage Month is so very important. It will provide the opportunity and space for Arab Canadians to showcase their culture, their talents, and why they're proud to be both Arab and Canadian. This is important as there are sometimes misconceptions and often misinformation about who Arabs are, what community members are like, and about their history in Canada. Arab culture includes many different facets, from food to music to art to literature, all of which have a positive impact on Canadian society. From buying a shawarma wrap at your favorite Lebanese restaurant here in Ottawa, to going with your friends to Petit Maghreb in Montreal to enjoy some mint tea and sweets from a Moroccan vendor, to buying embroidered silk and satin kaftans from a Palestinian small business in Mississauga, to hanging out in Arab cafes and lounges in Edmonton. These are just some of the many ways that Arabs share their culture with the broader Canadian community. And we thank them for that. Arab Heritage Month in Canada will be a terrific opportunity for Arab Canadians to be recognized for their contributions to this amazing country. It will give us the opportunity to recognize and pay tribute to the countless Arab entrepreneurs and small business owners right across Canada who do so much to support their communities. Many stakeholders, Mr. Speaker, are supportive of this bill, including the Canadian Arab Institute. Jad El Tal, the Director of Research and Policy 
of that Canadian Arab Institute said to me just last week, and I quote, it is time for Arab Heritage Month to be proclaimed in this country so that us Arabs can feel like we can celebrate both our Canadian identity and our Arab roots. They are not mutually exclusive. An important part of being Canadian is celebrating how diverse we are as a nation. Canada can no longer paint a picture of the country without including Arab Canadians in the frame, he said. I agree, I agree with him completely, Mr. Speaker. I share the sentiment and I support the statement. I have always believed that Canada's diversity is its single greatest source of strength. It is a conclusion I've arrived at, having had the privilege of living on four continents and working and traveling in over 80 countries, Mr. Speaker. That belief that Canada's diversity is its single greatest source of strength informs this bill. While Arabs come from different countries of origin and, of course, different religious backgrounds, they have more in common leadership entrepreneurial spirit and a strong work ethic, then they do differences. Of the people living in Canada and born in an Arab country, more than half have been admitted into Canada as economic immigrants. Almost 25 percent have been admitted into Canada as refugees. In the most Arab populated areas in Canada, the vast majority of Arabs are of Moroccan, Lebanese, Algerian, and Egyptian origin. More than 90 percent of the Arab population in Canada resides in Ontario, Quebec, and Alberta, with Montreal, Toronto, and Ottawa Gatineau having the highest concentrations. Les Canadiens d'origine arabe, Canadians of Arab origin from all walks of life, significantly, significantly contribute to the social, economic, and political life of Canada, as well as the cultural landscape through literature, music, food, and fashion, among other things. This bill would underscore and celebrate the historic contribution made by Canadians of Arab origin in the building of our marvelous Canadian society, both of the past and of today. And to teach and to learn about each other about other cultures. In Canada, we currently celebrate the following such months. Tamil, Irish, Asian, Caribbean, Italian, Portuguese, Islamic, Black, Sikh, Jewish, Indigenous, Filipino, German, Hispanic or Latin American, and Women's History Month. Mr. Speaker, Arab Heritage Month in Canada is long overdue, and I am hopeful that my colleagues will support my bill so Arab Heritage Month can join the list. In the United States, Arab America and the Arab America Foundation launched in 2017 their first edition of the National Arab Her American Heritage Month. Four years later, President Biden, through the U.S. State Department, officially recognized April as the National Arab American Heritage Month. Arab Heritage Month in Canada will provide us an opportunity to show our appreciation for the invaluable contributions made by Arab Canadians to build a stronger and more inclusive Canada. It'll be time to recognize and celebrate the contributions of, of Arab Canadians, individuals such as in business, Nubara Fayan, the co-founder of Moderna, Ablan Leon, who founded Leon's in 1909, Aldo Ben Sadoun, the founder of Canadian retailer Aldo, Mohamed Faki, CEO and founder of Paramount Fine Foods. In the media, Mohamed Fami, an award-winning journalist, war correspondent, and author. Nala Ayed, an award-winning correspondent with CBC. In arts and culture, René Angelil, husband of Céline Dion, a, produ a producer, talent manager, and singer. Kanan, a poet, rapper, singer, songwriter, and instrumentalist. Nina Massoud, an actor who's best known for his role as Aladdin in 2019. And right here in the House of Commons, Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Transport, the Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion, the member for Edmonton Manning, and the member for laval les -Iles. And Mr. Speaker, on a more personal note, in my own family, beginning with my Syrian-Canadian godfather, 
who was a man of great intelligence, kindness, and integrity. His origins were humble. In fact, they were poverty. And his values instilled in me a deep appreciation for hard work, giving back, and public service. And more recently, Mr. Speaker, many of my nieces and nephews have married Lebanese spouses. We have welcomed them with open arms into our large family, and they have welcomed us into theirs. The enactment of Arab Heritage Month in Canada will ensure that contributions of Arab Canadians are recognized, shared, and finally celebrated across this great, great country. Not just every April, not just every April, but every day. I'm asking my honourable colleagues in the House to support this bill. And of course I welcome their questions. But I hope through my remarks, Mr. Speaker, to have made the support of this bill a self-evident truth. We are always stronger when we stick together. And to close with the words of wisdom imparted to me by my late departed mother, who used to say to her ten children at the dinner table, understand, children, if you pull apart, you will feel like five. But if you pull together, you will feel like 20. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments?